Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, and we are taking a look at a CZ-97 semi-auto pistol. This is... a lot of people just consider this like, oh, it's a CZ-75 in 45 caliber, right? Well, actually it's not. It has a number of fairly substantial mechanical differences from the 75. And to me that's kind of interesting. The CZ-75 was one of, remains one of the best uh, double stack 9mm steel frame pistols really ever made. It was originally a military pistol and I think it gets overlooked by a lot of people because it had a lot more influence really in the, the European side of the market rather than the American side. Here in the US, CZ is just another one of those sort of mid-range foreign gun companies to a lot of people and they don't have the cachet of some of the American brands. Well, on the opposite side of the ocean, CZ is one of the primary and premier handgun manufacturers out there. And CZ pistols are major staples of the competitive shooting, shooting world worldwide. Anyway, the CZ-97 was of course introduced in 1997. Uh, it is in 45 ACP, and before we talk about how it turned out or why it didn't turn out so well, let's take a look at the mechanics. Alrighty, so there's our 97, and if we go ahead and compare it to a CZ-75, they don't really look all that different. This is just like a slightly fatter version of the 75. If you look at the numbers, the, the, the 97 is a little bit bigger in all dimensions, but the numbers don't really seem to make it come out all that much bigger. However, in feel, especially in the grip, it's definitely a substantially larger handgun. Now the 75 locks like a typical Browning pistol. There are a series of locking lugs on the top of the barrel right here that lock up into matching recesses in the slide when the barrel tilts up and down. The 97, however, locks on the front of the chamber against the back of the ejection port opening. So you can see the locking right there. It locks right here instead of having any lugs on the barrel. You'll see that in a moment when I pull the slide off. The 97 also has a removable, an easily removable threaded barrel bushing, which is fairly unusual. Uh, the 75 does not. The 75 does have a barrel bushing in there, but it's pretty seriously fixed in place and you have to go to work with some gunsmithing tools to get it out. As for magazines, the CZ-97 has a 10 round double stack single feet magazine. We'll touch on this a little bit later, but you could probably get more ammo, more rounds into a magazine this size if you really wanted to. Notice that there are witness holes for 5 and 10 there. And this has a pretty long taper where it goes from double stack down to single. A little bit longer, in fact, than the CZ-75 magazine. Let's go back for a moment and look at the markings. This is a CZ-97B. There is no standard CZ-97. They went straight to the B model to match the CZ-75B uh, that was is the standard uh, made in the Czech Republic. Serial number on the slide, the frame, and the barrel. Uh, A0177 is a very early serial number. This is a quite early gun. And it has a couple other early features. The wooden grips are, are an early pattern. Uh, a couple years later they would go on and replace these with a, uh, an aluminum grip that is substantially thinner. That helps with the, the grip size a bit. These also have slide serrations only in the rear. They would go on today if you get one. Uh, it also will have slide serrations in the front. And they've also added fiber optic front sights to these, which this early gun does not have. Control-wise, this has a safety on it. So when the hammer's cocked, you can engage the safety or disengage the safety. That's pretty much all there is to it. There is also a BD model that has a decocker as well, uh, but we don't have one of those here to take a look at today. Regular three-dot sights. I mean, all the rest of this is pretty standard. There is a nice beaver tail on the back to prevent you from getting bitten by the hammer, which is something that I certainly appreciate. That's an issue I have with a lot of 1911 type pistols. Now disassembly is very simple. We're going to line up these two notches, like so, and then punch out the slide stop pin. The easiest way to do that is to use that plastic base plate on the magazine to do it. Right there. Pull that pin out, and then the slide comes off the frame. You may have to use a little bit of force there. Oh, 
as with all CZs, this has full length frame rails on the inside of the frame instead of the outside. The recoil spring, as you can see here, is not fully captive. So that comes out. And then, unusual for CZs, you then have this plunger tube that comes out. And that is relevant because that is what holds the barrel bushing in place. You can see there's a little notch cut out of the barrel bushing right there. So when you install it, you just line that up to that point. There we go. And then this plunger tube holds it in place. I think it is important to point out that this barrel bushing should not be, does not need to be, super tight. Uh, it, you, you line it up and then lock it in place. The newer versions of these actually have uh, a whole bunch of these notches around the circumference so that uh, you're not stuck with a single location that you have to tighten it to. And to get the barrel out, we have to unthread this bushing. This is totally alien to CZ. That comes out, and then you can lift the barrel out. Note, like I was talking about earlier, there are no locking lugs on the barrel. It uses the front of the chamber section here as the locking surface. The 97 also has a loaded chamber indicator built into it, which is this spring-loaded little pin. When there's a cartridge in the chamber, that pin gets pushed up like so. You can see from our proof mark there, this is a 1998 manufacturer gun. So really quite early. They only introduced these in 97. So I'm going to go out on a limb here, without having actually talked to anyone at CZ about this, and say this was primarily made for the American market. 45 ACP doesn't show up a lot of other places, certainly not with the popularity of 9mm um, outside of the US. We Americans really like our 45 caliber pistols, largely, well entirely, because of the 1911. And when this was introduced in 1997, it was during the US assault weapons ban. So there were a number of things going on there that contributed to the potential success and viability of a gun like this. Uh, magazines couldn't be made with more than 10 rounds of capacity. So if you're limited to 10 rounds, well, you might as well have 10 rounds of 45 instead of 10 rounds of 9mm. Traditionally, the 9mm pistols always had this substantial advantage in capacity, but with a legal restriction on magazine size, that goes away. So the CZ-97 was designed with a 10-round magazine. It's, it's a double-stack magazine, sort of, but really, if you take a look at this gun for its size, one has to kind of wonder, why does it only hold 10 rounds? Well, the answer is because that's how it was designed, based on the legal structure at the time. One of the problems for CZ with this, in my mind, is that today you can get a similar sized double stack 1911 type pistol or several of the other 45 caliber guns that are out there now with like 14 round magazines in the same size. And that's a serious hit on the CZ-97. At this point, you know, you can get an 8 round flush, basically flush magazine for a 1911. The difference between 8 and 10 in the magazine isn't that big. And so it's, it's not that compelling to try and convince someone to give up their 1911 in favor of this for only two extra rounds. In addition, it's simply just a pretty big pistol. The numbers don't really... To me, the numbers don't fully give you the sense of how big this is in the hand and how much more it just seems to weigh than a CZ-75. So unfortunately for CZ, I think they put together a really nice pistol, but it just never quite managed to take off all that well. Uh, they are still available, so they're obviously doing okay, um, but I don't think they're selling a ton of these, and unfortunately I think this will kind of limp along until eventually CZ discontinues it for simple lack of interest. So this one, of course, is an early example of the type with the early features and the wood grips. Uh, if you would like to get one of these, perhaps prepare yourself for a CZ-97 collection before they become unavailable. Well, uh, you can take a look at Rock Island's catalog page that has their pictures and description and value estimate and all that sort of stuff. You can go ahead and find their website on your own, or you can follow the link in the description text below, which will take you to ForgottenWeapons.com, and you can continue on to Rock Island from there. Thanks to, for watching.